Yeah, my name is Scott Pack. I have worked in the book world for probably close to 20 years. I used to be the head of buying at Waterstones. So my team decided all the books that went into the, the three for two campaigns and all that sort of stuff. And um, I worked for several years at HarperCollins, ran the Friday Project, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. Um, more recently have been freelance. I left in 2014 to go freelance and uh, I do freelance editing on Readsy, funnily enough, which is why I'm here. I also work for Unbound, which is the world's first crowdfunding publisher, and have my own digital imprint, which I founded with my best friend Kat, uh, called Abandoned Bookshop, and we reissue old forgotten books. We are going to discuss the five, well, five of the most common mistakes that authors make when they submit their work. Um, these these lessons are taken from uh, a, uh, a masterclass that I've been running for the last couple of years, and also from an ebook that I've written called How to Perfect Your Submission, um, which is available on Amazon. Little plug there, but you're getting all this stuff for free. You don't have to buy the ebook to get this information, you lucky blighters. So we're going to start with point one. Um, the first mistake that I want to make sure you guys don't make. My mission will have been achieved and accomplished here if you guys don't make these mistakes when you submit your work. So the first mistake that I come across a lot is authors not being ready. So do not make the mistake of not being ready. That may sound like a like a strange thing to say, but let me let me clarify it to an extent. There are two elements to this. Across my career in publishing, I reckon about half the manuscripts I was sent as unsolicited manuscripts weren't ready. They weren't ready to be sent to me at all. They were one, two, maybe more drafts short of being ready. And it's a real shame because they could have been great books in a month, two months, three months time, but they weren't when they were sent to me. And uh, it's a very, very common mistake that people make. So if any of you guys have been taking part in NaNoWriMo, and congratulations if you have, because obviously today's the last day, then for goodness sake, do not send your manuscript out next month because it will not be ready. Question I'm asked a lot is, how do I know if my manuscript is ready? Um, and it's a tricky one. Uh, I would say a few things. Firstly, have you taken it as far as you can? Is it as good as you can make it? Do you now need professional help to make it better? Um, if you do, you may want to consider using someone on Reezy, of course, who can help you knock it into shape. But if you're confident it's as good as it can be and it's ready to go out, fine. But maybe get a second opinion or a third opinion. And to do that, you need to find some, some readers, some people who are going to read it for you. Now, people who are not qualified to read your manuscript before it goes out are uh, people you are sleeping with, people you have slept with in the past, or people you may wish to sleep with, sleep with in the future. Uh, anyone you're romantically involved with, close relatives, people who have an agenda and don't want to upset you, basically. Um, they're not going to tell you the truth. You need someone who's going to be really, really honest with you. Um, when I try and, and uh, suggest who that might be, I always talk about um, if you're a member of a book group, there's probably someone in your book group who is uh, very opinionated and never really likes the book that you guys are reading and has always done lots of research on it. That's the sort of person you need to read your manuscript. Someone who's going to be really honest with you and tell you what works and what doesn't. Try and get some independent readers. You may have to bribe them with a meal or a coffee or a beer down the pub or something, but find some people who are not emotionally connected to you and who will happily tell you what they think is wrong with your book. Because there will be something wrong with it and you need people to point that out. So try and get some independent readers to make sure your manuscript is ready. Also, and, and this often isn't covered and I think it's, I think it's really important, um, are you ready? Um, are you sure that you're ready? because you're probably about to embark on a period of rejection. We've all heard stories about fantastic best-selling books that were rejected many, many times. J.K. Rowling, as we know, was rejected umpteen times. The last two winners of the Booker Prize 
were both rejected many, many, many times. So the chances are you're going to be rejected. And you might think at the moment, yeah, that's fine, I'll be all right, no problem. I, I can cope with that, I'm expecting that. You'll be surprised when you are first rejected quite how bad it feels. And I think you need to be emotionally prepared for that. Some authors actually aren't. I've, there's a terrible story, true story, about uh, an, uh, an agent friend of mine who was sent a black feather in the post by an author that they had rejected. Um, people can take it really badly. <laughs> Um, I'm laughing about it, but it, it's probably not a laughing matter. So it's very important that your manuscript and also you personally are ready. It's really, really vital. Um, so that's my first mistake to avoid. Make sure that you are ready. Take the time to prepare. It's really, really important. Now, just so you know, I'm happy to answer questions at the end. I'll whiz through our five, our five points. Should take us about uh, maybe another 15 minutes or so. And at the end, I'm happy to answer any questions that come my way. The guys at, uh, at Reedsy are manning the, uh, the keyboard and they'll be filtering those out for me. Um, so anyway, that's point number one. Really, really important. Make sure you're ready and your manuscript is ready. Mistake number two. Um, not doing your research. This is a, a, another very important one. Uh, and you'll notice that these mistakes are all before you've even submitted anything. You know, they're not mistakes in the submission themselves. They're the mistakes in the process. So not doing your research. If you think about it, uh, I'm guessing if you're submitting your work that you are hoping to be a successful author. Uh, no one wants to be an unsuccessful author. You want to be a successful one. And if you're going to be a successful author, then effectively you're, you're taking on a new job. Um, if you're a massive bestseller, um, this is going to be a full-time career. For most of you, it'll be part-time, uh, with the best will in the world. Very few people make enough money out of writing to make a living out of it. So you are going to be embarking upon a new career, a new job. Now, if you were going for a job interview next week, you would do an awful lot of research, I'm hoping. You would find out about the company you're working for. You might find out about the people you'll be working with, who your boss is, um, what the sales turnover is of the business or what their uh, environmental policy is or all sorts of things. And you'd certainly look at your role. You would do lots of research. It's a full time job. You're going to go <laughs> and apply for a job. So you're going to do your research. Therefore, I'm surprised that people don't do that same level of research when they're going to submit their work to an agent or a publisher. Because if you think about it, you are applying for a job, um, albeit in a slightly unusual way. So it's really, really important to do your research. And the sort of research you should be doing is identifying who is likely to appreciate and enjoy your book. So whether you're sending to agents or publishers, you need to find the right sort of people to send it to. Um, if you are absolutely convinced that your novel is going to be the next multi-million bestseller and you want to sell, sell it for a massive advance, uh, and best of luck if you do, then it's pointless sending it to a tiny agency or someone who's just started or, or a small independent publishing house because they're not going to be able to do that for you. Likewise, if you have published a history of shoes 1952 to 1975 you probably don't need an agent there's probably only one publisher on the planet who would publish your book it's the specialist shoe publisher and you might as well go straight to them so you do your research and um, think about who you should be approaching now in terms of how to do that research there are various places you can go firstly you can look at the trade press um, both online and in print in the uk and in the us and abroad most publishing industries have a, uh, a trade magazine and most of these have a certain amount of free content that you can access and it's well worth just um, jumping in and having a look at that from time to time to get a feel for the industry. What publishers are getting men mentioned? What agents are getting mentioned? Who are the, who are the agents that are, uh, that are selling lots of great novels or non-fiction work to publishers. You'll find out a little bit about the flavour of the industry as well, often a lot of commentary. It's a really good way to understand the industry you're about to enter if you don't know too much about it already. Um, 
Obviously, you can go to agent and publisher websites and find out what uh, they're asking for, what they want to receive, what sort of authors they represent or publish. If you are trying to find out who is the agent for an author that you admire or whose work you think um, is similar to yours, then you can always go to the acknowledgements page at the back of a book. That's a really good handy, handy tip because most authors, if they're being polite, will thank their editor and they will thank their agent. It's really go a really useful way of, of getting hold of, uh, of some names. So find out who represents the authors you admire, the authors you want to be alongside. The other thing you should do is hang out on Twitter. Um, often when I, um, uh, when I present this sort of stuff in groups, I find out a good half of the people in the group aren't on Twitter. And although I understand the reluctance, um, loads of editors and agents are on Twitter. You don't have to necessarily get involved with them, but it's a really useful way to find out what's going on. Like I say, you're trying to get the flavour of the industry. Trying to check its temperature, you're trying to find out what's going on. Then there are publications like uh, the Writers and Artists Yearbook and others, and also writers' communities um, and workshops and festivals. So lots of ways that you can try and find find out who is best to submit to. Now the two mistakes I've discussed so far are all about preparation, and preparation is really really important. Well, let's skip on to actually submitting your work. Now, in my ebook, I go into quite a lot of detail about how to do that. We won't have time to do that here, but I'm still going to pick out a few of the key things for you. So this next mistake, mistake number three, um, I'm pretty confident all of my publisher and agent friends will agree with me that this is the number one mistake that authors make. And please, I don't want any of you to make this mistake. And that mistake is quite simply not reading the guidelines. So if you are submitting to an agent or a publisher, the chances are you've gone to their website to find out what they want and how to submit to them. If an agent or a publisher wants you to submit, they will have guidelines on their website. If you can't find the guidelines or a way to submit, they probably don't want to hear from you. Those guidelines are vital. They are telling you how to submit to that agent or publisher. And the guidelines, no matter how strict uh, or, or what they clarify for you, you need to follow them. So many authors ignore the guidelines or don't pay attention to them. And it's just bloody annoying as a publisher or an agent to, to be faced with that. Because you think, well, if they can't read these five points and get them right, how am I going to deal with them as a person? How am I going to deal with them as an author? They could be a nightmare. I should caveat all this by saying that we are all humans. We know people make mistakes. Uh, we know it's quite nerve wracking to submit to us. So we're, you know, we are lenient. We are quite relaxed. But when we've asked you for a 300 word synopsis and you send us a 2000 word synopsis, the alarm bells start ringing. If you think about the fact that most agents and publishers get sent dozens and hundreds of manuscripts every month. We've developed a shorthand. We know how to identify something that's not for us. And often it's people that haven't followed the guidelines because you think, actually, if they can't be bothered to do this, is this the sort of person I want to work with? It might sound quite cruel, but we can't possibly read everything we get sent in its entirety. It's really hard. We need to be able to whistle it out somehow. So publishers will have guidelines. Please follow them, no matter what they are. Now, if some of the guidelines are problematic for you, here's a good example. If the guidelines say send three sample chapters and your novel, for whatever reason, the opening three chapters are perhaps a line long. You know, they're deliberately very short for some reason. It's fine to email the information uh, address or, or the contact for use the contact form and just ask the question and just say, look, really sorry. Book's a bit awkward. <laughs> My opening three chapters are incredibly short. Should I send you a particular word count? Um, and they'll usually get back to you and let you know. They'll appreciate the fact that you've asked the question as opposed to uh, just sent them the whole thing. So don't be scared. We are approachable. We are generally nice people, especially if we've had a cup of tea or coffee. Um, but do please follow the guidelines we have set. They're really, really important. They're there for a reason. They're to help us and they're also to help you. So read the guidelines. 
Mistake number four, poor cover letters. Well, I say cover letter, we're now in the days of the cover email. So what I mean by this is the query letter or the query email, the communication you send to the agent or publisher to tell them about your book. Uh, in the olden days, uh, these, uh, these used to be written letters, of course, and we used to send in actual printed manuscripts. And I'm old enough to remember piles of these in the office. It's quite scary. Nowadays, pretty much everything's done by email or contact forms. But you still have to create some sort of, of query message, usually an email. Um, people often struggle about this. What are the rules? What do I do? Um, but I think it's quite simple. If you imagine that you're typing it onto a, a Word document, you should keep your cover letter to one page. That's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be any more than that. Um, it should start off with a very brief intro, just telling the agent or publisher what it is you're, you're sending them. So, um, dear Scott, I am sending you uh, my crime novel, which is complete at 85,000 words, and it is called X. Yeah, it's very simple. What, what am I being sent? Um, if you can put that sort of information in the first sentence, it makes my life easier, because if I don't publish crime novels, I know this book isn't for me, and I can move on. I can say thank you, but no thank you. So you start with an intro. You start with um, a little bit about the book. Then I would advise telling the agent or publisher why you are submitting to them. Hopefully you'll, you'll have a reason for submitting to them. Um, when uh, in my ebook I talk about a strategy for who to submit to and and how um, but so you will have come up with a reason you'll have some reason for submitting to them tell them why it might be that you are the agent of some of my favorite authors it may be that I went to an event you held at a conference at a festival and I, I, I loved what you said but what, whatever the reason is that you're submitting tell them unless of course that reason is you're the only agent that has yet to reject me. That's probably not a great reason uh, to put in there. Follow that up with a pitch. A pitch is a one paragraph summary of your book and is similar to the back cover blurb. It's punchy, it's a call to action, it's, it's making me really excited and want to read the book. Um, it's a hard thing to do. I, I go into a little bit of detail in the ebook as to, as to, as to how to go about it. But um, it's just a paragraph, 50 words or so. Then tell us a little bit about you. Not too much. <laughs> we don't need to know, you know, how many kids you've got. And we especially don't need to know how many cats you've got. I get that a lot. But tell us a little bit about you and what you do, um, especially if it's relevant to the book. If you, for example, if you're an English teacher, that's worth mentioning because we're probably going to assume you can write. If you work in the police force and have written a crime novel, that's relevant. We like that. Feel free to tell us. Um, lots of irrelevant stuff is, is, is not needed. Um, other stuff we don't need <laughs> is um, quirky, funny stuff. We, we, it, it might be very tempting to be quirky and funny, but it often doesn't come across. Anyone who sent an email <laughs> that tried to be funny and been taken the wrong way, you'll know what I mean. Um, just be straightforward. Be friendly, by all means. Be relaxed, be jovial, but don't try and be quirky and funny because it, it might not work. And that's it. Just very, very simple. This is my book. This is why I'm sending it to you. Here's a little pitch. This is me. Thanks very much. That's your cover letter. Keep it simple. I have a template for what I think is the perfect cover letter um, in the ebook. But uh, as long as you follow those, those guidelines, I think, I think you should be fine. And now we move on to the fifth and final mistake I think authors make. And that's the synopsis getting the synopsis wrong. Okay, now, before we start this little bit, I should clarify that, as far as I'm concerned, nobody in the history of publishing has ever written a wonderful synopsis. They are really hard to do, so we're not expecting works of genius. But I think it's really important to explain what a synopsis is and, and, ha and how it's used by the agents and publishers. A synopsis is purely a summary of the plot. There's no emotion or drama in it. It is literally, this happens, then this happens, then this happens, the end. Most agents, not all, but most agents would want an, uh, a synopsis of no more than 500 words. I know some, uh, and read the guidelines, because if the guidelines say they want more, you can give them more. 
But they want a synopsis of about um, 500 words. So that's what you should give them. Most authors I know uh, find it very difficult to keep their synopsis that short. Just stick to the essence of the plot and keep all drama and emotion out of it. One tip I offer for people who are struggling to do a good synopsis is to write a one sentence synopsis. So try and summarise your entire book in one sentence of maybe 15, 20 words. Once you've done that, and it's really hard to do, but once you've done that, then expand it. Allow yourself to write 30 or 50 words. Once you've done that, expand it a bit more. Take it to perhaps to 100 words. And keep going until you reach a point, somewhere between 300 and 500 words, where you're happy. And you think, actually, that's enough of a summary of my plot. Um, the reason for doing it that way is it's often much easier to start small and add than it is to edit a 2,000 or 3,000 word synopsis down. It's really, really hard to do that. Um, and uh, finally, with a synopsis, uh, just bear in <laughs> just bear in mind that you're not going. You can't leave me on a cliffhanger. I need to actually know what happens in the book. So uh, I often get a "and will she ever escape?" question mark dot 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 or something like that at the end of a synopsis. I need to know. And the reason for this is because the way most publishers work is they will read the cover letter, then read the synopsis, so they know what the book is that they're dealing with, and then go and read the sample chapters. So the synopsis needs to explain what effectively what's missing, because usually you'll have only sent a few chapters. Um, and it allows the publisher or agent to work out what's going on. Personally, I don't read the synopsis until I've read I go straight from the cover letter to the chapters to see if I like the writing. If I then like the writing, I jump back to the synopsis and find out what the book's about. Um, so uh, that's just a little tip as to as to how to do a synopsis. Um, so those are my five classic mistakes. One, not being ready. Two, not doing your research. Three, not reading the guidelines. And if you don't do anything else, of the, that's the one to follow. Four, crappy cover letter, and five, dodgy synopsis. If you can address all of those and think about those, then I think you're potentially onto a winner. Um, certainly, and what I'm trying to do here is make sure that your manuscript isn't rejected because of something you've done wrong. Uh, I can't make your manuscript a work of genius if it isn't. I can't ensure that you are signed up for a multi-million dollar advance. But I can make sure that you're not rejected because you've caught something up, basically. Um, before I move to questions, I just want to talk about a couple of extra mistakes. You're getting some bonuses here. Classic mistakes that authors make, silly mistakes that they make. Spelling people's names wrong. Um, there are only nine letters in my name, Scott Pack. 10% of the things I get sent are, are, are spelled incorrect. Scott Park, Scott with one T as opposed to two T. Now, I don't mind. Um, my ego isn't so big that I'm upset if people spell my name wrong. But it does sort of indicate a uh, clumsiness or a lack of preparedness, which is worrying. Um, typos. Again, we're quite forgiving. We all make mistakes when we type things up. But there should be a little red wavy line under the word when you've got it wrong. So, so maybe pay attention to that. Try not to make outrageous claims. You have not written the new Harry Potter. I'm sorry. You just haven't. Uh, no one has. You have not written a book as good as Catch-22. Don't compare yourself to things that actually you're not, you know, you're not going to achieve. Be sensible. If you're trying to drop in a few, uh, name drop a few authors or books, one way you can do that without sounding completely arrogant, is to say, people who've read my book have said it reminded them of whoever it might be. That's a, that's a nice way of doing it. Or, you know, when I imagine my book published, I see it sitting alongside author X and Y on bookshelves. That's a, that's a nice way of doing it, which doesn't say, I'm as good as J.K. Rowling. Um, and also try and avoid genres that don't exist when you're explaining your book. Um, one of my missions in in my life is to stop people pitching things to me as a fiction novel. Um, it's a novel. All novels are fiction, that's sort of the point. Um, if you want to explain the genre you're writing in, think about a bookshop or maybe Amazon categories and think about where it would sit there. Is it a crime novel? Is it a science fiction novel? 
Um, you could perhaps go into an extra level of detail. If it's steampunk, you probably want to say that. But, you know, you and certainly don't say crossover, genre busting, never been done before, because that's going to put people off straight away. Well, if it's never been done before, how am I going to sell it? So those are little classic mistakes that people make um, that you need to avoid, I think. Hopefully, anyway. Um, I'm also, just because I've been nice enough to sit here and talk to you for 25 minutes, uh, I'm allowed to plug myself, which is nice. So my profile is on Readsy. Uh, I'd be very happy to consider any collaborations you want to suggest. The work I do, I work on developmental edits. So I will work on a manuscript and just really delve into it and do all sorts of bits and pieces. I also do uh, editorial reviews where I read a manuscript and give you feedback. And I will do, uh, I will help you with your submission package. So I will look at your cover letter and your synopsis and, and all that sort of stuff and help you out with those. So feel free to drop me a line on Readsy if you want to do that.